It's hump day. We are halfway through the week. Welcome into First Take. Thank you for hanging with us. Ja Rule will stop by the show a little later. Looking forward to that. As always, Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith in Philly. I'm Molly Karam. And gentlemen, I must say, you both are looking exceptionally clean today. I like the looks. Good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? You know, at least Molly could pick a side just one day. I don't care. You, you pick his side. Just, just say one of us looks better than the other. I'm good. I'll, I'll do it. You look better than I look today. I give you that. Whatever. Way to go. Whatever. I try. I was trying to be nice, and it, and it was the and it was the truth. You're trying to GQ my call today. Yeah, you're trying to fence ride. Here. Whatever, yeah. whatever. How are you, Stephen A? I'm doing all right. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's all go. All right. Another rough night for the Lakers. We just heard Kobe's frustration after the Nuggets handed the Lakers their fourth straight loss to open the season. Stephen A, can Kobe turn it around? I don't think so. I mean, I think that he can turn some of his shooting woes around, but he's not going to turn around the fate of the Los Angeles Lakers. This is simply not a good basketball team. You've got a mixture of young and old with parts that don't match in a Western Conference that's just so pristine, so big time that the Lakers uh, entered this season irrelevant before a game even began. That's just really the reality of the situation. We're looking at Kobe Bryant right now. Obviously, he's not impressive. Uh, another night where he struggled shooting from the field for the most part. It wasn't 31%, but it is what it is. 31% shooting coming in the last night from the field, 20% shooting from three-point range. He's Kobe Bryant. I have to believe that Ultimately, he'll get himself going in terms of actually making more shots because it's not like he's being on lockdown and can't get off of his own shot. But in the end, this is the game of basketball, Skip Bayless. And what we have to take, excuse me, what we have to take into account is the level of talent that is playing alongside him. D'Angelo Russell may have all the potential in the world, but he's a rookie, okay? Swaggy P has become a caricature of himself. You look at, at, at this kid, at this kid uh, Julius Randle, uh, didn't play his rookie campaign because he got hurt the first game of the season, and he was raw coming out of Kentucky. So he's got some development to do. So essentially, he is a rookie himself. And then you take into account your experienced front line players, even though Louis Williams could give you something off the bench tantamount to what Swaggy P, Nick Young could give you, if not better, in the end, he's but some he but he's but so limited because you've got Kobe and you've got Clarkson to consider. And then when you look at your front line, you've got a guy in Brandon Bass that can hit open shots and defend, but he's an average player. Let's just call it what it is. And then you look at a guy like Roy Hibbert who lost some pounds in the offseason. I suppose some people thought that would make him faster, but he's still as slow as a snail compared to the competition in the Western Conference and in today's NBA basketball game. You get up and down the floor. You run. There are fives who are really stretch fours, and this is what they do. Everybody's stretched to some degree. You've got to be, unless you are, you have surreal defensive prowess, like a Dwight Howard, like, like, like a Hassan Whiteside, or you've got big-time offensive skills, like a DeMarcus Cousins, who I believe to be the best big man in the game. The fact of the matter is the game is devoid of prototypical Quint's essential sensors. Not that back to the basket, you know, formidable big man that nobody can guard. No, this is a different day. It's a different game. And Roy Hibbert seems outdated in today's game. So when you take all of those things into consideration and then you couple it with the dysfunctionality that is the Los Angeles Lakers with a boss in Jeannie Buss who refuses to fire her brother, who refuses to push this franchise in a forward direction by recognizing he needs to go, there's no way Kobe can overcome all of that. He's only human, and on top of that, he's 37 years of age. He ain't what he used to be. He's not the young line that can carry this franchise on his back anymore. And that's the reality of the situation. So I think he can get his shot going, but it really, really doesn't matter. We said the Lakers were going to stink coming into this season, and that's where they are right now. And it's not going to get much better. And by the way, as much love as I have for Byron Scott, I believe he's in the wrong place. The only reason he's a Lakers coach is because he's a part of that franchise. In the end, he's better off coaching veterans who have established what they can do on the NBA level to try to teach guys to get to that point, I don't think that's where Byron Scott's strength is. I think he's the kind of guy that needs to have a veteran squad, and I think he can do special things with a veteran squad. But with a young crop, 
teaching them how to play game, the game of basketball, how to be professionals, how to adjust to playing on this level, that's going to take some time. And he doesn't have that on his side. So you don't have the leadership, you don't have the coach, you don't have the players, which means you don't really have a basketball team. Mm -hmm. They just call them the Lakers. Okay, but for the sake of this question, this question that I find pretty distasteful because it's very difficult to deal with because I, I know you're a Kobe fan yeah. and believe me, I am too. Yes. I don't want to talk about lack of supporting cast. I don't want to talk about Byron Scott. I don't want to throw Jim under the bus again and again. We know all that. We get all that. This is about mm. Kobe. And I think I hear you saying that you're at least seeing the beginning of the end of Kobe Bryant. Is that fair to say this morning? Well, I think it's fair to say because he refuses to leave the Lakers, Skip, which is why I brought all of those other things up. If he was playing on a quality basketball team with quality players, I think that this is nothing more than a shooting slump. But mm -hmm. with the Lakers, when you don't have anything to work with, I think it's worse than that because you're on the Lakers. I'm not sure about that. Back to Molly's original question, can he turn this around? Yeah, obviously, he can turn his shooting around a little, but I don't think he can turn his game around a whole lot. I think that best case scenario that we're going to see Kobe Bryant, if he does quote unquote turn it around, still be a shell of his former black mamba self. I, I'm just, I'm now convinced we're never going to see that guy again. Not after two debilitating major injuries and surgeries that he's been through at his advanced age and we've talked all about how many games he's played, 20th NBA season. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm seeing a guy who just realized and was shocked by the fact that Father Time has tapped him on the shoulder. And I never thought I'd see Kobe Bryant lose his confidence, but Stephen A., I know it's only four games in, but I watched last night. He just looked shell-shocked. He, he, he looked like a guy who's, who's looking down at his body saying, go, you know, come with me. Come. And, and the body won't go with the spirit, won't go with the heart, won't go with the, the guts anymore. And, and Kobe's just re reduced to a spot-up shooter who has completely lost his confidence. Do you realize that last night, Kobe Bean Bryant shot three air balls? Three! He shot two air balls on three-point shots and one on a mid-range jump shot. How embarrassing, how humiliating was that for one of the all-time greatest players? I think we both agree he's in our top ten all-time. I, I, look, I, I'm seeing the beginning of the end, and I, I, don't even like, I, I don't enjoy this, but that's what I saw last night. I saw a guy who can't even, to me, I, I'm sorry, I can't see him playing another year after this one. You, you make your case about could he go elsewhere? I don't know, maybe be rejuvenated by playing with a really good team or a, another superstar. I hope you're right about that. That's not the guy I saw last night. And, and Stephen A. That's fair. Late, late in the game, there was a play that caught my eye. It wasn't the deciding play of the game, but it was still the game was still hanging in the balance. It was 2:18 left. Gallinari had the basketball over on the wing, and somebody came to pick for him, and he waved off the screen like I don't need the screen. I got Kobe on me. I don't need you to pick Kobe. I can take Kobe. And I thought it was a little bit of a cheap foul. Kobe sort of bodied him, held him a little bit. But I, I wouldn't have called the foul, but Gallinari went up and banked it in. Three-point play, and that, that was the final nail in that coffin. That was the end of that game. So they lost to Denver at home. And, and I do, like, like you, you keep saying, D'Angelo's got talent and he's got future and potential, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't see it. That, that was not the second pick in the draft. So, so to your point, the big, bigger picture, Look, you, like you said, they had bigger plans. They had a plan A for to, to get a big man, and they didn't get a big man. The plan B should have been to take Jaleel Okafor with the second pick in the draft. I think it would have helped things. Yep. It, it would have got, it would have sped your recovery a little bit. We've always seen, already seen nice flashes from Jaleel with the Sixers. He can play. I, I don't know if D'Angelo can play. Do you realize he doesn't play in the fourth quarter? He played zero minutes in the fourth quarter last night, matched up against Amoudier, who didn't have a great game, but he had 12 points and 10 assists. He's better than D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo is averaging in the fourth quarter 2.8 minutes through the first four games. So Byron's just saying, you're not ready for prime time, young man. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep you over here by me until you learn the game. And if you want to make the point, well, he will learn it. I, 
I'm sorry, I didn't see it at Ohio State, didn't see it in the, in the NCAA postseason. I, I don't see it now. Not the second well, pick let's in the keep draft. In mind, let, let, let's keep in mind, uh, uh, even though he didn't have a good shooting performance, no question about that, Louis Williams did have 20 points, 24 points. He hit 16 of 19 from the field, uh, from the free throw line, I'm sorry. And you got to remember, Skip, that he's the guy. He can play that point guard spot, even though he's not really a point. He's a scorer. So if you're the Los Angeles Lakers and you're usually operating from a deficit, you don't need a point guard to come in there and run your team. You need guards who can put the ball in the hole, which is more Louis Williams than D'Angelo Russell. And since the, the Lakers are operating on a deficit each of these four games in the fourth quarter, I can understand why D'Angelo Russell's minutes are limited to some degree because you're not asking him to run the team at that point. You're looking for somebody to erase a deficit and put the ball in the hole. Now back to Kobe. I do believe there's some dissipated level of skill is under, that's undeniable. Father time seems to be catching up rapidly. Like I told you, it doesn't sneak up on you. It's just like, boom, it just arrives, you know, at a moment's notice. And all of a sudden, you wake up one day and you're just not what you used to be. We understand that. But the flip side, Skip, allow me to bring up Michael Jordan in this respect, okay? And can somebody get that music out my ear, please? I'd appreciate it. I'm talking. Here's the deal. When you're talking about Kobe Bryant, do you remember Michael Jordan, Skip, when he was with the Wizards? Yep. He clearly wasn't the Michael Jordan no. that, wasn't, that was with the Bulls. But the flip side is, had he been on a better team, you're trying to tell me he could not have helped that team? Of course he could have because he's MJ and he knows what to do. And even though he wasn't himself, he was still good enough and better than most to be able to help if he had had a team around him. The problem is he was being asked to carry a hefty, hefty load. That is the case with the Los Angeles Lakers. If Kobe were on the Clippers, if Kobe was on some other team that was far more talented and respectable than the Los Angeles Lakers, I think we'd see a Kobe that would look better than he's looking. The problem is Kobe, in order to be effective, has to be Kobe that we've all known and loved all of these years on these Lakers. That, that mm -hmm. is where your problem lies. He doesn't have guys around him, yep. Skip, and therefore Father Time is going to really, really pummel him quicker than expected yeah. because of this team mm -hmm. that he is playing with. It's a damn shame what the Los Angeles Lakers have done to him over the last three years of three to four years of his career. It's a disgrace. I think the whole thing is a shame, and I apologize to you. We yes. got to get some better music. We got to get your kind of music for our B-roll music. You, you should. I'm not interested in music, music when I'm talking. Okay, I got it. I'm not interested in music right, when I'm talking. We talk. got it. We got it. All right, we'll leave it there. The Lakers play at the Barclays Center on Friday against the Nets. On to another struggle.